let me invite His Excellency Ma Tony Nilangavil to deliver the presidential address. His Excellency is the Metropolitan Auxiliary Bishop of Sirio Malabar Catholic Archdiocese of Trishur. He will be also remembering our founder, Ma George Alapat, on his 50th death anniversary. A very warm good afternoon to each and every one of you. I'm not addressing anyone on the stage. Respected dignitaries on the stage, respected family members of Dr. Eden Bala, my dear brothers and sisters of the Jubilee family, what an excellent oration, isn't it? We just now heard. I think we need to give him a great clap. Dr. Farooq Udwadia, Udwadia I'm, my pronunciation may not be correct. I, from his words, I just now told him, it was not an oration from someone, a learned person from books. He was in fact sharing his life. Only such a person can talk like this. You know, we are very often taken up by technology, taken up by machines, and we forget human person. I was reminded of my own studies in medical ethics that was not my major, but I attended one course in that direction. And I could listen some of the reflections I heard those days in the Catholic University, Louvain, Belgium. You know, any medical care, even that word is, that phrase itself is, is questionable today. Because the trend of the day is medical industry, not medical care. Medical care has become medical industry, which reflects how much commodified even our patients are. Patients are commodified, not to say the treatment. I remember my own experience, I called to one uh, hospital when I was in my 20s to know about the status of my own best friend in the seminary. How is Alex? I asked. The one at the other end of the uh, telephone told me, we don't know Alex. Then he asked someone else and said, oh, that is bed number six. Bed number six is dead. You know, without any, any feeling, he simply said in Malayalam, without any feeling, with total indifference. And I think that's what we, you know, this is the culture against which our great orator has today warned us. I think Jubilee family for that matter, has got a great legacy represented by Dr. Eden Wala, a man who comes from a different part of our nation with a different language perhaps, but he had the language of compassion, care, mercy and so on. Compassion in biblical uh, tradition has got a very, uh, there are four or five terms in the Bible which speaks about various nuances of uh, compassion. One particular Greek word that uh, attracts me always is uh, the situation of 
you know, when you see a patient in anguish, there comes a, a pain from the bottom of your belly. The term used in Greek is plangnitomai, which has, which has the same word is also the root of spleen. I don't know whether they are connected, but this word in Greek culture means uh, when you see a great pain in front of you, another pain comes from your inner self. Which motivates you to do something for this person. This is possible only if you do not merely look at the organs, merely look at the machinery, merely look at human being as a machinery with several parts and you are, in, you are specialized in one particular part. Orthopedics, but only leg and that too only the right leg. You know, that way of looking at human person, I think it was against this particular culture which uh, our, uh, which respected Dr. Farooq Udwadia warned us. And I passingly mentioned that uh, Dr. Edenwala represented this culture which we just now heard. This medical care which we originally intended and which we still trying to uphold in this present climate of medical industry. As someone recently associated with the Jubilee Medical College, I can tell you that we are facing a lot of opposition from people who represent medical industry. Let us hold on to the legacy, the original legacy of Jubilee Hospital, that, that Jubilee dispensary in which uh, Professor uh, Dr. Edenwala started. And uh, let us witness to humanity, let us side with humanity by looking at patients as human beings, not simply parts of a machine. With these words of introduction, now my task is to talk, to reflect our memories on Bishop George Alapart, whose 50th death anniversary we commemorate together with this great event, Pelicanus. Here I may not be able to I speak in English all the time, also for the sake of uh, the life world of Bishop George Alapart. But one thing is true. Why we remember Bishop Alapat today in the context of this uh, uh, Father Muringet, Monsignor Muringetheri Memorial Lecture and uh, in the context of this great oration in memory of Dr. Edenbala. This hospital was founded by Bishop George Alapat. It was the Sacerdotal Silver Jubilee Memorial. It was founded as a Sacerdotal Silver Jubilee Memorial. We know that uh, uh, the Diocese of Trichur began as the Vicariate of Trichur in, in 1887. Our first bishop Bishop Adolf Medlicott, who was originally from the present day Bangladesh, the undivided India those days, his first emphasis 
his priority was education and therefore we see the beginning of st thomas elementary school but named already from the very beginning as st thomas college school with an intention of developing it into a higher institute of higher education a very far sighted man who thought that the development of a society depends primarily on educational institutions now bishop george alapart his third successor also along with his uh, uh, his emphasis on education he also gave importance to medical care health care and therefore uh, we can see that uh, jubilee medical college and the hospital mission hospital at karanjira they are two, they are two daughters of uh, bishop george alapart the elder daughter is uh, of course jubilee hospital but then he later on started also uh, karanjira mission hospital a time when medical profession was a very very rare thing you know he there was even no indigenous nurses ava nurses available those days uh, he had to hire two med two reverend sisters who had uh, who were not from india together with uh, an mlp licensed doctor medical licensed practitioner and a very small beginning and all this was the intention uh, the the vision of bishop george alapart now his right hand was monsignor jos monsignor muringateri why he said his right hand because he was his secretary from all throughout his uh, episcopate his period in the office as bishop he was also the secretary to the diocese those days there was a secretary to the diocese who took care of all the documents so george alapart bishop george alapart entrusted monsignor muringateri to execute his vision and therefore i feel that uh, remembering bishop alapart in this hospital is certainly very fitting bishop alapart was born in 1900 11th february the feast of uh, our lady of lourdes you know lourdes is a symbol of healing people rush to lourdes uh, for healing and therefore maybe that is also a reason why he made it a point to enter into healing ministry now he was the first student in the st thomas college when this small school became later on developed into a college in the register of st thomas college you will find number 1 alappattu varunni that was his name so he is the first uh, student in the college later became the patron of the same college he has also during his period he also you know be in, uh, was also instrumental to begin three other colleges in trichu he had his higher studies in uh, in rome in the famous propaganda college propaganda college where there were 
those days 300 seminarians from 40 different countries speaking more than 30 languages you know the, their native 30 native tongues they all they together studied in that college and they not only studied they lived together and in that college you can imagine what an exposure he might have had those days he was elected not appointed he was selected as the general prefect a, a very a, covetous position you know all these students from different uh, countries elected him as their leader so even as a student he showed great leadership qualities and during his studies in Rome he took two doctorates one in philosophy the other in theology Later on, taking into consideration his uh, educational achievements and uh, uh, all what he has done for the development of education, University of Detroit in USA awarded him DLL, an honorary doctorate. So he had three doctorates. He was a man not so popular like uh, Bishop Kundugulam. Bishop Kundugulam was a crowd puller. He could uh, take uh, thousands into his uh, hands with uh, a 10 minutes talk. But Bishop Alapat was a, an intellectual, a scholar. After his studies, he was appointed uh, as spiritual director and professor at St. Mary's Major Seminary. Those days we had a major seminary. And he was the later on rector of that major seminary. In fact, he was the, he was the last rector of the major seminary. After, during his period, that major seminary closed down because we had already another uh, Interdiocesan Seminary in Alway, St. Joseph's Mangalapura. So this diocesan seminary was closed. He was the last rector uh, of uh, uh, this particular seminary. So he was in the, his earlier career was very much into very much with the priestly formation, seminary training and so on. But during that period can you imagine he was uh, he had uh, students like uh, uh, Wadakan, the famous Joseph Wadakan, a social reformer. And during his, uh, or dur as a student in a seminary, he allowed this brother Wadakan to engage in social reform movements, which was quite revolutionary those days. Seminary those days was, I don't say like uh, prisons, but they were a place totally set apart from the world. And uh, seminarians were not allowed to go out without permission and only very rarely they got permission and so on. So uh, even during his seminary, uh, during his career as a seminary professor and rector, he was very open to the world. He had already opened the windows of the ecclesial scenario to the world. And we know that this was also uh, the context of Second Vatican Council. Pope John XXIII wanted to convene a, a council, a universal council, which was not very much encouraged by his own advisors, the cardinals. But then he did a very symbolic act. He got up from his seat and went to a window and opened the window and said, let some fresh air come in the church. And I think uh, Bishop George Alapart was already prepared in that direction 
during his pre-Vatican ministry. And uh, by God's providence, he was also, he was chosen, he was elected to participate in the Second Vatican Council. He took part in all the four sessions of the Second Vatican Council. We don't have any documentary evidence uh, regarding his contribution uh, in the Council. But we know that uh, the, the, his own Chancellor those days, uh, Dr. Chirayat, was a peritus, an expert in the Second Vatican Council. And I'm sure these experts very often drafted the documents for discussion and so on. He could also influence the council through his, his own chancellor. Bishop Alapat was a very soft-spoken person. I'm told that he, doesn't, he didn't talk too long like me. Maybe I'm taking too much time now. Uh, but he spoke little but he spoke something with content, you know, which could really uh, influence his listeners with some takeaway for everyone who listens to him. And in that sense, I think he has contributed a lot. In the diocese, he again was not a popular figure, but he is remembered for his great vision about the diocese. If you look at the, uh, the charitable institutions of this diocese, which are running even today, majority of these charitable institutions started during the time of uh, Bishop Alapat. I was thinking uh, majority of institutions started by at the time of Bishop Alap, Bishop uh, Kundugulam, who is known as the uh, Bishop Father of the Poor. But already Bishop Alapat had already made use of Father Kundugulam, uh, Father Chitilapilli, his own, you know, collaborators, priest collaborators, with unique charisms to initiate several such projects. He was someone who, I, I, one, another example of his uh, vision would be the beginning of a couple of industrial schools, which during those days was a very novel idea, which was also an inspiration from certain discussions in the Vatican Council. Because, uh, you know, vocational training is also an important dimension of uh, any social ministry. It's not mere charity. You should also be engaged in empowering the poor people, empowering uh, the people in the peripheries. And that is what he, he was very much focused on. So we have got the St. Mary's Industrial School, which originally started in, a play, in the place where we are now standing. The school stood exactly the place where our, this particular hall is now. Now we, uh, when the, the hospital got developed and uh, it became uh, a, uh, a medical college, we had to acquire the land of that industrial school and the industrial school, school is now moved to another part of the city. I said this because uh, here I feel charity and uh, human empowerment converges. Healthcare and social service converge. I think uh, there we also come to know a legacy of uh, uh, Bishop Alapad. Now I should have spent more time on his contributions uh, to the, the church, I mean the intra-ecclesial life, what he contributed to the, uh, the church life within. I feel the, the, the audience before me 
uh, would not be the right place for me to talk about that. Not because anything secret in that, but you may not be interested in that. Only one thing I just uh, want to say and I conclude, uh, he was not only take part, uh, he not only took part in the uh, Second Vatican Council, he introduced some of the very revolutionary steps taken by Second Vatican Council in his diocese. And in that aspect, he is the first in India, the first one to put into practice what Vatican II wanted to implement. The first among these first things is the lay participation. He gave great impetus to lay formation, lay participation in the church. You know, up until then, the church was considered as the church of the bishops, priests, sisters, and the lay people, the only task, only duty of the lay people were to pray and to pay. But now you see Vatican Council introduced a concept that people of God are the most important dimension of the church. Church is primarily people of God, which comprises, of course, of also of the bishops and uh, priests and so on. But as people of God, we are all equal and we need, in fact, bishops, priests, sisters, we all are at the service of the people of God. And in that, uh, that, that particular vision of the church was something a unique contribution of Second Vatican Council, which uh, Bishop Alapart introduced in his diocese. Now I see uh, Dr. Sunny George here. He was one of the, there, there was, he organized some lay people, including Dr. Sunny George, and also my father, I know, uh, and instituted lay leadership institute. Of course, the institute as such was started during the period of Bishop, uh, Bishop Kundugulam. But already before that, immediately after that, Bishop Alapart introduced the Pastoral Council. Pastoral Council as an organization that should guide the diocese. It was a result of Second Vatican Council. Diocese of Trichur was the first in India to introduce pastoral council. Diocese, this, this art, Diocese of Trichur is the first in India to introduce presbyteral council, some of the achievements of Second Vatican Council. And therefore, uh, this I only said two or three aspects of his contributions to the church, only to mention as bishop and uh, someone distantly, you know, following uh, Bishop Alapart, he has contributed a lot to the development of the ecclesial life uh, of the Diocese of Trichur. With these words, I am very, once again, very happy and honored uh, to have able to reflect a bit on Bishop Alapart today. I am also very, once again, I would like to express my great uh, appreciation of the oration and the great orator today. I also uh, congratulate Dr. Allen, who is going to receive award uh, in this auspicious occasion. Thank you very much.